Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is SQL Seku checking in, and today we're gonna to jump into something new for Power BI developers. Microsoft just released their official MCP server and announced it at Ignite. And this opens up a brand new world of possibilities. It lets tools like Visual Studio Code, Claude, and other tools that use MCP and agents connect directly to your Power BI model. So you can run props, generate DAX, automate modeling tasks, and even document your entire model instantly. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up, how to connect Claude to it, and a few fun things I was able to do with just a couple of prompts. So if you wanna check out the official release, I'll also drop a link in the description. For now, let's dive into it, let's get on my computer, check out different things, and let's get into it, man. We're gonna have a lot of fun. All right, so this is the actual website from Microsoft themselves. Um, where you can actually go and install this. So this is the Power BI modeling MCP server with official documentation. So you can see here that it is officially from Microsoft.com. And as of today, there are 1,721 installs. I saw this yesterday it was right around 500. So this is the week of Ignite. So it just came out this week. So I fully expect this uh, installation number to really increase. On this particular page, you see a lot of high level information about what an MCP server is. The use cases, what you can do um, out here. There's also this watch the video for an end to end demo. Uh, if you click on it, it'll take you to another page that will walk you through the actual demo itself. MCP so you can go check this out. So I recommend watching it. It's also on the Power BI big channel. So I would highly recommend checking it out. And then also as well, there are in depth detailed descriptions of how to actually go to the GitHub and how to install this yourself. Another thing on this page is getting started. So there's some of the different things that you can do. In this video, we're gonna go through how to connect to a Power BI desktop because I have a local file that I'm gonna test out with. But you also have a semantic model in the Fabric workspace. And then if you're using Power BI project files, you can do that as well. So a lot of great stuff that you can do. Also in this one example, I'm going to connect using Claude. I've already had it set up and installed, but I'm gonna walk through how to do that. So as I talked about earlier, if you go to GitHub, this will take you to the actual GitHub page. Um, in here and within here is the same set of instructions. So make sure you're scrolling down and getting the information in here. Uh, there are two ways of installing it. You can install using Visual Studio Code and using GitHub Copilot. You know, these are recommended and really great things to have. Um, and they walk you through the process of being able to install it using Visual Studio Code. And it just walks you through here. Um, if you're using a different MCP server like I'm using, I'm using Claude to connect to this. Um, but if you want to manually install this, these are the instructions that get you here as well. So make sure you go to GitHub to do this. You can walk through this and install it yourself. Um, make sure you have it on here. But once you have it there, we can go through the process and actually start using it. So let's go to my Power BI desktop that I have. Oh, before I do that, Kurt, Data Goblins. If you have not checked out Data Goblins, he has a phenomenal series on MCP servers. Um, a lot of content he's been putting out. So definitely check out Data Goblins on YouTube to check out his content that he's been pushing out. And Kurt is doing some phenomenal stuff. So definitely check it out. All right, let's go into what you all came to. Let me show you how to connect your Claude instance to Power BI. So like I said, I've already set up the server installation and this is good on my end. So make sure you do that step first and get that installed. Once you have it installed, you'll have your Claude set up and you can come in here and start typing things to it. So let me show you my Power BI workbook. So the Power BI workbook I have is NBA season, 2025, 2026 season. It's a local workbook that I have. The data model itself is just three tables that I have. I have an NBA back table. Um, I have a dimension NBA players tables and dimension NBA teams. I'm using the CSV file just for this example only. I'm not doing anything with SQL Server right now. I'm just doing a local file just to test it out. But as you can see, you know, really simplistic uh, data set. A lot of good things in here that I can do from a dashboard perspective, but I have it built out. And I also want to show I don't have any relationships built out because I want Claude to start building out those, those relationships for me. So let's go ahead and go into Claude. And when I go in here, we'll see that if you select your uh, search and tools icon, you'll see Power BI model and MCP. So you see that I've already had it built out and I'm able to connect to it. If you click on the arrow beside it, you see these are different operations that you can type into Claude that will let you do different things. So there's model operations, calendar operations, a lot of different things. Um, one big piece of advice, if you're going to use MCP server, make sure that you are up to date with updates because I fully expect this list to grow as more updates come from server. So just make sure that you are updating yourself um, and you're doing best practice by connecting to GitHub. 
But now that we're here, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to connect to our workbook. So the workbook I have is called NBA Season 2025 to 2026. So I come in here, I'll say connect to NBA 2025 through 2026 Power BI Workbook. So as you can see, it's on the instance that is running locally because I have it up. Uh, and it's say like perfectly, I've successfully connected to the workbook. And now it's established. So now here's a list of things I can do. We want me to list the tables, view measures and calculations, check the data model structure, run DAX queries and make modifications to the model. So in this example for this particular one, like I mentioned, I don't have any relationships built out. So if I want to come in here and say make relationships in the data model. So as you can see, it's thinking through it right now. And in this example, I do have my auto date table turned on. I'm going to turn it off and I'll have it create an actual standalone date table. But that's why I found the auto generated table. And then as you can see, it found the relationships with the naming conventions and the IDs that I had. And so now I would say that we have two active relationships on here. One relationship from the game date to the date table and then team relationship, team ID to team ID. So if I go back into Power BI, you see that it has this example of refresh now. So I gave it permissions to actually write back to my workbook. If I come in here and select refresh now, we'll see that it's actually connected in here now and everything is good. So now, next, if I want to create an actual date table, I'll say, go ahead and create a standalone date, date table for me. And then now it's going to write the DAX query. So if I want to allow once or always allow, I can tell it. For this example, I'm going to say always, uh, I'm just going to say allow once actually. And so because I only have 2025, 2025, it's only going to create a really small date table. Um, this is a really sm simple data set. But if I had a data, data set since 2023, 2024, it will come up and create that date table for me. And if you want to see what it's doing, you can come in and select down and you see the actual DAX that it's creating. All right. Now it found a calendar table that was hidden, um, but then it went ahead and just created one for me. And now it's going to create the date table with the proper DAX expression for me. Now it's going to do that. And now we'll see that the calendar has been created. Now let's mark the date column as date. So you see all this, all I've done is typed in two prompts. I haven't done anything, but Power BI is doing this for me. And this video is at seven minutes. So in seven minutes, I've created my relationships and I create a new date table and it is automatically generating that stuff for me. So we go back into Power BI. We see we have our calendar table and it's built out. And if I want to go ahead and just start you know, optimizing this, I can hit refresh now. And we see now we have a calendar table. So you know, things are just really phenomenal with MCP. And this is really just scratching the surface. Uh, last thing I'll show right quick is how you can actually create a measure. So I can tell it to actually create a measure and I can say, you know, create a DAX measure for teams only. So now it's done again. Every time that you, if you don't select always allow, you want to go in here and check, just hit allow once. So there's no way for you to give a permission to go in here. And then it will start creating this. So you'll see the win loss columns is in my data set. So now it's checking that and it's going to create an actual DAX measure for me that shows the win loss. So we go into our actual fact, probably fact detail table. Uh, we'll see the win metrics here. We'll see the total wins and we see we have the total wins right here. So uh, let me go ahead and zoom in. Actually, let me change that up. Might not be able to see my right side. All right, there we go. I got my facts. Let me move myself out of here. We see that we have the win metrics, new measure that was built. I come in here and click total wins. We see that it automatically did that. I didn't have that at the beginning. So Claude did that. So in seven seconds, seven or eight minutes, it created a data model. It built out a date table and it built some metrics out for me. So MCP is great. Have you tried it? Let me know in the comments. Well, let me know what fun stuff y'all are doing and talk to y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.